where we're able to uh, to do the most good in the most areas. So this class is an online live class, which means you can ask us questions. We are right here now to answer your questions. If they're relevant, we'll answer them right now. If they're not relevant, we'll just kind of wait till the end of class. Class will run for about an hour. It's two days a week. Um, this particular class theme, the whole theme for the, for the week is called Costumes and Appearances. And we have eight classes for you since there's two classes a week. This class is human only, um, but feel free to bring your puppy and join us by, by just carrying or holding. If your puppy's asleep, let them sleep. On Thursday, we're gonna ask for you to bring your puppy to class because it's going to be interactive where you're actually working with your puppy in front of us. I'm Yo Armendariz. I'm the owner and founder of Canine Learning Academy, and this here is... I'm Julie Freiman. I'm one of the certified dog trainers and one of the managers at Canine Learning Academy. And together we write the content that you see here. So we spend lots of hours trying to write content and finding ways to make it easier to understand. Um, I like this platform because a lot of puppy owners can't get into a class specifically right now, but hardly ever. And now you can join anytime, whether you miss a week, you come back, it doesn't matter. The theme is set for the entire week. So if you miss this theme, it'll repeat in four weeks. Few of the rules, um, ask questions again, it's live. So we want to answer your questions right away. Um, if we don't get to them, go ahead and leave them in the chat and we'll address them at the end of the presentation so that because I promise if you have a question everyone someone else has that question with a young puppy hi Robin I heard you are a, a friend of my sister Tammy's in Michigan so thank you for for joining us I really appreciate you coming from Michigan to visit us oops we lost our cursor okay one second All right, so back to class rules. Sorry about that. The class is free. And the reason why we put this particular class free is because we wanna make sure that if you have a brand new puppy, that we can help you get off on the right paw. It's important that if you can learn and absorb some of this information, that hopefully it sets a good foundation moving forward. You'll notice that we never talk about um, fear, using force, or anything like that, just set up for your puppy is just as important as the training that you, you do later. This is a list of the rest of the classes. So the Puppy Start Right class, after four consecutive classes or four classes, um, four weeks, so if you're taking two a week, then that's eight classes, let us know because we can assign you the STAR certification. It's a certificate from the AKC. We'll ask you a few questions. We'll ask you to pledge as a good puppy um, owner, and, and then we'll send you a certificate on, through email. After puppy start right, it's prep school. Prep school is where we teach all of the basic behaviors, loose leash walking, sit with duration, sit and wait at the door, um, recall. Um, even though we're gonna hit a few of those behaviors in puppy start right, prep school is the course that you take you know, for the next four to six to even eight months. After that class, we have the Canine Good Citizen. This is for public access, and this is the test it takes, the, the prep class to take the AKC Canine Good Citizen test. If you have an older dog or a dog that is reactive, specifically on leash to an other dogs, we have a class called the Rowdy Rover. And then tricks class, suitable for any dog of any age. Tricks class is Saturday. I, we have a lot of kids that participate in this class with their, with their puppies and it's so cute. So if you'd like to do some tricks classes, Sunday at 11 o'clock, you'll see on the right hand side of this column, I listed some of the classes that might be good for you. The Sunday 11 o'clock is a free open class, a coaching session where you just 
you know, Sandra joined us last time. We put us, you put the puppies in a, in a specific room and a coach talks to you specifically on your problems. If you've got a rowdy rover, you can go in that same class and you'll just be in a different class with another coach. Other specialty classes, this Wednesday, we're gonna go over clicker training basics. Although today you're going to learn what a clicker is and how to use it. Um, so that's gonna be a little bit today, but if you wanna dive in deep, there's a whole hour class and that workshop is free. So welcome to our Puppy Start Right class. We will be having it every Tuesday and Thursday morning at 11 a.m. This is, our company never uses force or fear to teach our puppies because we know how important it is to maintain a positive relationship. So they want to listen to you. They want to come to you. Um, so it's a positive approach to problem solving prevention. If we can catch those problems early, we can make sure you're not going crazy when they're a teenager and training without using force because we are proud Karen Pryor certified training partners, which means we always use science-based training methods. We don't do it because it's been done for 20 years. We do it because it's been proven and that it's been researched and that it applies across all kinds of animals, including, I think Yo trained a chicken, I trained a fish, I've worked with elephants and dogs and cats and all sorts of things. Rabbits. Rabbits, rabbits. all sorts of animals learn in a, the same way. And we know uh, we're gonna break that method down for you so that you can become your own professional animal trainer. Yeah. This course is different than our prep class. This course, we really kind of dive into the why things happen. So hopefully with understanding why, you'll have a little more patience with your puppy. So a little overview of today's class, uh, or specifically on what Puppy Start Right is. We're gonna go into problem prevention. We're gonna talk about the introduction to training, um, the foundation training exercises. What are the basics, like taking food from, the, from your hand as a basic foundation? socialization and exposure, and then learning a little bit about the body language. Um, and we're gonna go into the developmental periods because your dog is going to go through a lot over the next two years. So we want you to understand the stages. So if something is strangely happening, you can kind of go, well, how old is our puppy now? And you'll go, oh, that, yeah, they mentioned that earlier. We've got a few puppies that graduated and they're six months old and the parents are like, oh my God, my dog's not recalling anymore. And we're like, well, how old? And, and then they go, yeah, the hormones and stuff like that. So being understanding of that can really help set up the future of your puppy and your training. So again, today is all about costumes and appearances. Today, we're gonna to talk about exposure to hats and chewing. So if anyone's having problems with the dog chewing on furniture, jumping on you, we're gonna talk about that. Sandra had mentioned chewing last week, so hopefully we're able to, people can jump in on their own now. Nope. One second, keep going. So, uh talking about enrichment projects that you guys can get doing, you can get going started now with your puppies. Um, and the importance of all of these sounds and exposure in a positive way can set your puppy up for success for the rest of their life. So um, making sure that you start with the basics before we just throw our dogs into those advanced agility and obedience yeah. courses. If you have a strong foundation, you will have an advanced learner in much, much more quickly. So there's eight developmental stages when it comes to your dog's growth from the very, very beginning at birth all the way to our seniors. So today specifically, we're gonna talk about the socialization stage, which is puppies three to 12 to 16 weeks. So if your dog is in that stage, go ahead and use the chat and type in yes, capital Y-E-S, that your dog is in that stage as we begin talking about what to expect in that stage. So 
during the socialization period. So if you've gotten your dog from um, a reputable <laughs> breeder, a yes, 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 yes. If you've gotten your dog from a reputable breeder, they should have exposed them to a lot of different noises and sounds and different places and people. Um, the crucial period, unfortunately, to have our dog experience all of these things is only until 12 months. 12 weeks. I mean, 12, 12 weeks or 16 weeks if you have a much larger dog, like a giant breed. So this is the time. It's a really small crunch period that you have to influence your dog's behavior and temperament for the rest of their life. And we see a lot of what happens when there's not no. socialization yeah. on the other side when we get calls at eight, nine, 10 weeks because their dog is going crazy or they're having a heart attack about a thunderstorm. Um, so if we can set our puppies up for success by exposing them to as many things as possible comfortably, calmly, and in a positive way, we can prevent things like reactivity and aggression towards dogs and other people, fearful situations, you know, dogs that don't experience a baby crying may be startled by that when they hear it for the first time out in public. We had, um, over the last six months, we've rehomed, helped rehome five dogs. Right. And most of the time it's right after I'd say like the six to eight month mark where people are realizing like this is a lot of work and the reactivity that they're, that they're having from their dog at six to eight months. If you, you know, if you're feeling, feeling a dog that's all of a sudden 80 pounds and they're reactive, um, can be really hard on life. And when we go back and we go, okay, what were some of the things that happen? Usually it's something that happened during this stage that stuck with the puppy or stuck with your dog. And it's really hard to reverse. Including a lack of experiences. Yeah. So um, this is, we want to just stress how important this is. Put a giant star next to your yeah. notes. Listen up really close during this um, particular part because we know that a lot of vets will tell you don't, don't take do the puppy it. outside ever until they're exactly four months and um what we're telling you not to do that you got to take your dog out and safely we, yeah, yeah safely using lots of different things that we'll talk about but we also have a chart from monday through friday of what to do every single day and when we get to that sheet i want you to take a picture of it because it might give you a an idea of what your daily life should be like with a puppy. Again, this is between now and 16 weeks, and then you can change and switch over to more obedience training. But the number one most important thing that you can do on a daily basis is socialization and exposure in a positive way, making your dog understand that the world is safe, right? We, uh, we get asked a lot about three or four month old puppies walking loose leash in public yeah. and in crowds and we're going, that's certainly not the point for a preschool or kindergarten age dog or person. Um, it's to explore. explore. So a little bit about body language. We are going to be doing this project. Most of these things that we're talking about, we're going to do on Thursday. One of the things that we want to talk about is puppy play. Most of you don't have another dog for your dog to play with. So it's important that your dog is still getting that essential play. What is one of the few things that we tell our clients play is good for as far as a puppy play? So play is teaches your dogs what's socially acceptable, inc including greetings or initiation of play. Some dogs that uh, don't have practice at this. They're we, rude. They're rude. <laughs> they come in and they tackle or they hide under chairs because they're not sure about this jumping, wiggling thing. You can also start to read your dog's body language. The language that your dog specifically speaks is different from everyone else's dog. So by getting down on the floor and looking them in the eye and bonding with them in that way, you understand them and they understand you. So in this, um, this puppy play video, I'm gonna play, we're gonna do again on Thursday. I want you to practice this by putting up your camera, not right this second, but 
but when it's time, putting your camera up and setting it to slow motion so that you can watch your dog's ears go floppy and their mouth open so that you can understand the body language and will help you interpret what all those things mean. When your dog is stressed, your dog will have a lot of different other body language. How can they socialize now while still sh sheltering in place? I can, I heard the dogs can get virus too. So one, there's been one recorded case of the virus being transmitted to a pug um, in one city. So yes, that has been a possibility, but it's certainly not spreading. And that is a rare, rare, rare case. Um, and this is part of socialization. So play what we're showing you right now. This is socialization. It doesn't necessarily yeah. mean face-to-face -face contact with everything they see or hear. Puppies learn not just by touch, but smell, sound, sight. So in our field trips, like we're going to, we have again, the schedule for you. We're going to talk about how to do this safely in this moment right now and this time when we have all of the restrictions. So we're going to answer that in just a second. Here's a video of what puppy play looks like. Here are the things. There is no rules. Wear a long sleeve. Tight pants. Read that. Um, wear, yeah, wear long sleeve, put your hair up in a ponytail and get on the floor and act like a dog because your dog needs it. They need to know what their teeth is for. Perfect. All right. So here is puppy play. We call this human play. There's no toys. You get down on the ground as low as your dog is, just like another dog. You use your hands to move and you push and pull. And again, there's no rules. We want to see whether your dog is comfortable. Are they feeling fearful? But you become the dog that your dog always wanted. <laughs> So through play, you're going to learn to bond with your dog. Your dog is going to love you and you are your dog's best friend. If you have multiple dogs, this is still so important for you to do because if you're separately, dog, separately, because if your dogs only play with each other, well, what's going to happen when you call them and their brother or sister isn't around? What's going to happen when they have to go to the vet and be separate for a while? Um, these, this is actually one of two. She's a litter mate. And so we're taking the time to do everything separately so that they can become the best versions of themselves, not just twins. Hopefully my two foster rescues can be socialized. Yes, a lot of times when we come across dogs who are fearful or unsocialized as older dogs, we take the time and go back to initial puppy steps. It may take you a longer period of time than it would a little sponge like a three month old, but you can still do the same steps. It's just going to be a longer process to make sure that you understand each dog individually. So we're gonna play the video again. I want you to put your fingers on the keyboard and I want you to talk about the body language that I cut it off. <laughs> put the body language that you see. I want you to be specific. What are the ears doing? What does the mouth look like? Adam, we talked about this with Dar Darla, Darla. And I want to see if you guys remember what body language is this particular dog giving us Talk about the tail, which she has none. <laughs> the ears, the mouth, the body weight, is it forward or back? I want you to just type in what you see. So I'm gonna play a little bit of this again. What to do when they bite hair or hands during this? Nothing. Nothing. This kind of play is no rules, just like it would be with another dog. If you can't handle that, we're gonna Talk, talk about, about ways later. how to alter that because some people have sensitive skin or they can't get down on the floor. But for this particular play that we're talking about today, put your hair up, roll your sleeves up or have something tight. Don't wear your best Lululemon no. tights, right? Mm -hmm. Go get some PJ bottoms on or something and wear closed toed shoes because puppies bite, but that's how they explore the world. Without this, I had a dog that tr we were training and without understanding what their teeth are for, sure. the bite inhibition, without practicing this, your dog has no idea moving forward 
what their teeth can actually do. It is super important to do this exercise with your dog, not just for bonding, but for your dog to understand what is acceptable and not acceptable. We put down a dog last year, or helped put down a dog last year because in puppyhood at 16 weeks old, the dog bit somebody in the house, the person dropped the bone, and from that point on, that dog learned that the bite was the way to get what he wanted. And after two years, he had seven total bites, including the last bite, which was 110 stitches to a girl's face. So I can't express how important it is that your dog learns to use their mouth. And if it can't be on you, there's some other steps. There'll be some other play that we'll introduce each week. Each week. So it gives me the chills. Yeah. So. yeah. All right. Let's play this video one more time and talk about the body language that you're seeing. So you know what play looks like versus fear. So let's just kind of talk out loud. We see that the ears are kind of floppy. The body is moving curvy. Sort of curved, but her rear is maybe a little bit down. Like she doesn't have a tail, so it's hard to tell that This part. was her first play session. Mm -hmm. First time ever with, with Julie. Yep. So here we see her looking away. That was a little bit of fear. She comes back again and she tries again. This time mouth is open. She's leaning into Julie. She is using her mouth, but she's also got that one shoulder down or she's putting half of her body down. This is what we call a play bow or a play posture. Did you see the mouth open right here? Now this is what she would do with another dog. See her try to snap at her ear? Thank goodness she didn't get yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> so I just moved my head and then I distracted her over here with my arms for her to chase. Um, again, keep your hair up, don't wear your nice clothes. You can use your hands to move your dog away from you. So here, she started to get my glasses. So I just sat up a little to keep moving my arms and have her play that way. So Julie has this dog on a leash so that she can keep her contained within six feet. Did you see that little play bounce? The big jump. So she's building confidence every single time she comes back to Julie. She just gets a little more herself. Now this is what we call the little scratch right here like a pause or it's a, a stress signal right here this little scratch she's not itching she doesn't have fleas or anything she is literally like okay that was a little stressful a so that is something to watch when your dog is in a play session she's doing a little scratch there she like goes away from her she wants a little space she's avoiding her so that's avoidance that's stress Julie tries to bring her back in by putting hands on the ground, saying, you don't have to come to me. And then she's letting us know. Yeah, I'm done. I think I'm done. Okay. So when your dog is asking for space, you don't want to pull your dog in or crowd back in. Those of you that have children, kids sometimes don't read that body language. So it's important to understand, oh, my dog's feeling a little bit stressed. Let's give her space. I see it all the time. Yeah. The dog is trying to walk away or sleep or end the interaction and people keep going because they're cute and they're sweet. But if they're sleeping, you're asking for a bigger bite or more frustration because they're getting upset. So listen to your dog. And if you don't listen, do you know what your dog does next? Ah. Bark, right? They, they bark, then they show a little teeth, they start doing this stuff with their mouth, they might growl, they might really avoid you. So they escalate because they tried to communicate and you didn't listen. So it's important to listen when the very small signs that your dog needs space. Very good, Adam. If they're playing with a toy or a bone and you're petting them, it's not the right time to be petting them because they're occupying themselves and they're more likely to go, I'm chewing, now I'm chewing on you, <laughs> than just enjoying what they're doing at that moment. Another way to watch your dog's body language is giving them an em enrichment project. This is one of the enrichment projects we want you to do on Thursday. We want you to come with something that is metal in your cabinet, so like a muffin tin or a cooking sheet if you don't have a muffin tin. 
So we want you to take a look at this video and watch the difference in body language. Now, this is a dog that's doing a task much tighter, more much concentrated look. I want you to understand like it's not the same body language as play, but it's still kind of fun. So here's the sign of a dog, uh, the look of a dog that wants to work. Right, the spinning. Working together, these two young puppies are eating side by side, but they're, they have a task to accomplish, so they're not paying attention to each other at all. Now, this seems super simple to us, but to a puppy, a stainless steel bowl with lots of different holes in it can be stressful. There's yogurt in there, there's pumpkin, and there's two types of their food. There's their kibble, and then we've got a topper on there. So their tongue, they're using their paw, they're using a lot of the things that they would use if they naturally caught a rabbit and tried to skin it. So it's important that use enrichment feeders to help stimulate your dog's Brain. Ditch the bull, go to our Instagram or our Facebook. We have DIY. Don't go out and buy really super expensive things. We have DIY instructions and games and enrichment ideas at least weekly for you guys to try with stuff you have in your home. You already have it. And so let's use it to challenge and to enrich our dog's life because I think we all are feeling a little lacking enrichment, being stuck inside all the time. And that's how our dogs feel. All right, we have a, it says the screen shows the menu and the video is only on the right side, somewhat obscured by the side of you and us. All right, let me move this around and tell me if this helps. So, is that better? Is that better, Sharon? You can also move the, the video of us, I think. Yeah. It should be a way for you to. So let us know if you can see the video that's currently playing. So someone type in the chat yes or no. Looks good to us. Okay, yes. Cool. All right. Perfect. So this is our socialization checklist. And this is what, when we get a puppy in board and train, we have exactly maybe two weeks or three weeks to get all of these done. And I know that can seem overwhelming, but a lot of this stuff is really easily accessible, even in COVID-19 world. Yeah. So things like hearing or seeing a sporting event, even if it's on TV or just the noises, crying babies, I bet you have a vacuum or access to a washing machine that your dog can just listen to. So... Take a look at this list, screenshot it if you'd like. We've got PDF files that we can attach to your email later on today. And start checking off, one of your homework assignments is to check off some of the things that you've already have done. Have your positive interaction with. If your dog has seen a cat, but that cat spit in their face, <laughs> we're gonna circle that and come back to that one. So here is an example of your socialization and exposure list, Monday through Sunday. So socializ socialization and exposure, we did a different topic every single day. So for sound, okay, for sound, you can use the sounds on YouTube or on um, yeah, YouTube TV, or TV, movies. Netflix standing out and hearing you know just things that are going on in your street like kids playing or garbage trucks that counts this week's theme is costumes and appearances from people some of the examples that we'd like you to do this week is exposure to baby sound so you want to pull that up on your youtube you're going to do that by placing the youtube video on a phone or an ipad pretty far away from your dog while they're eating. So I want you to do this every morning while you give your dog their interactive feeder at a volume that's very low. You may not be able to hear it, but your dog can hear it after two minutes. And they're like, I, yeah, I don't care. You can turn the volume up just a little bit. Your goal is to be at full volume by the time if in four weeks. 
So the sound of babies, toddlers, preteens, male, you know, soccer game, um, sounds, and now sight. We have three field trips set, scheduled for you this week. Hopefully you can get to a coffee shop. We want you to take a go through the drive-through. Um, I actually live across the street from Starbucks. I walk over with the puppies and I'll pick them up. And the lady through the drive-through window, the mm -hmm. um, will barista. give me a, what's it called? It's Puppuccino. Called a Puppuccino. You can go to Starbucks. I think they're 50 cents. No, they're free. Oh, they're free. Yeah. And it's just a cup of whipped cream that your dog can have a nice experience while they're going to um, a coffee shop or a public place. And we have a video of that of little Miss Pearl like getting her puppuccino through a drive through at Starbucks. So just visit a drive through a supermarket, go into the parking lot of a supermarket, bring your puppy, carry them, and just kind of watch the interaction for about five minutes. Hear the grocery cart, see maybe the sliding doors or the lines mm -hmm. of people in mass. You don't have to get close. Nope. Obviously, social distancing is super important right now. So just being at an appropriate distance and watching and seeing, I mean, you'll watch your puppy's eyes get really big because that's their first time and their first exposure. So I easier. did a Trader Joe's with my dog. There was a bench by Trader Joe's. I sat on the bench and brought my dog's lunch and that's how we spent lunch or at a park, you know, on a bench while people walk by. But I like the grocery store right now because you've got a variety of people. You've got older men that have gray hair and you've got women, you know, wearing a mask. So it's very odd. <laughs> so it's a great spot for your dog to see other people and see different costumes, right? Um, if you have the opportunity to expose your dog to your postman or garbage truck, Amazon guy, the yeah, delivery UPS man. Guy. Yep. So that's how you do sight. As far as smell goes, I have down there a couple days. I want you to change your odor. <laughs> so you can do that by just changing your normal perfume, your body lotion, use a different shampoo, use different soap so that your dog gets used to a variety of different smells. Using things that you have in your, your kitchen and seasons like rosemary, oregano, cilantro, like pick just them making up. sure that they're not eating it, but you can rub it on a surface like cardboard and then they can smell it. Or you can put like it that. in the grass. I had a one project yep. where we just put it in the grass and the dog's like, Ooh, what's that? So just exposing them, cooking something like a fried egg, barbecue, like just kind of go through the things that have like a different spicy food. Yes. You want to get that smell out in the air because some dogs are more attracted to it and some dogs are totally averse to it. We are not caring about the reactions, correct? Uh, um, well, we care about the reaction. What we're looking for is to have a positive experience. So in this next slide, we're gonna show you what a positive experience looks like. If you notice that your dog is showing signs of fear, I think last week we showed Darla showing like her eyes were really big and she wasn't taking food when she saw a cyclist go by. That's a sign of fear. So that that means it's something you're going to have to continue working on. You're not checked. You can't check that off yet. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so here's a few videos of what we'd like you to do. So we've got um, Halloween coming up. So costumes is our theme. So this Thursday, pull out one of your old costumes, bring a mask, a hat, a scarf, even your formal wear that's yeah. been dusty in the closet and you haven't gotten to wear it in a long, bring out that gala dress or your old wedding dress or something like that, that your dog can see that you look like a totally different person. Here's Pearl at the drive-thru of Starbucks. You see that they're coming out. She's greeting with the cup and Pearl moves forward going, oh my gosh. This is the best day ever. This was pre-mask time, just so you guys know. So that was a positive exposure to someone coming out of a window, another human being wearing a hat. This was last Halloween. We had the dogs dressed up in costumes. Do it now before Halloween because you might have a dog that doesn't like to be in costume. Sweaters, especially for small dogs or dogs that get cold easily. If you start when they're puppies, 
when they have to wear it or when you're like, okay, dude, you're freezing to death, it's so easy to just put it back on them. I am training here in a costume. Again, this is last Halloween. I'm wearing a costume. I had a face mask on as well. So just dress up. You mm -hmm. want to dress up in front of your dog. So don't walk out of the room and show back up the very first time. You will work up to that. But the very first time, and here's the last video of Julie and I a few weeks ago shooting this one, and we masks, sunglasses, hoods, all of those things change hoodies. your appearance. Hoodies are a big one. Yeah. My dog is not crazy about the mask because I look like a different person. If you've got kids, this is so much fun to do with the kids. Just tell them to go pull out all the Halloween costumes and here's now watch this exposure. Tell me if Pearl looks comfortable. Well, she took food. Yeah. But she's curved. She's pushed back a bit. She's not, her ears are kind of down. So it may be that because I just kind of came around the corner, it may be that I'm leaning forward. We don't know why but she's telling me that I'm, I'm going too fast. Yeah. So I would either take off one part of my costume, I would try it again, dressing in front of her, or I would just toss her food instead of leaning and trying to pet her. So be generous with your dog's food right. during this time so that they can have a great experience with whatever it is that you're trying to expose them to. So problem prevention, you can either prevent the problem or you can later on fix the problem. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of the cure. It's a cliche because it's true. There's um, usually six to eight different topics that we're going to talk about. Today we're going to specifically go on chewing and jumping. So we're going to prevent jumping and chewing. We're going to show you how to do that. It's important that your dog sticks to their normal schedule and routine. Um, and there's rules that you have set, you know, in, in ground to everyone in the whole house that everyone's consistent. So as far as like jumping goes, whatever those rules are, like do not pick your puppy up if your dog is jumping. Do not pet your dog or put your hands on them when they've got two paws on you, and this is hard. Because they're really, really yeah. cute, and especially if they're small, oh, I don't mind, but you know what? Everyone else might mind, and if you wanna be around other people, especially older people or children, it can become a dangerous situation if it's not prevented and taken care of when they're puppies. So the three rules that we wrote out that would have to do with jumping and chewing are this. Do not pick up your puppy when a puppy jumps on you. So when you stand up and your dog has two paws on them, don't pick up. Don't even give eye contact either because when your dog is jumping on you, they're getting, they're asking for attention. So the moment you look down at them, you're giving them that attention. When you sit down and your dog puts their two paws on you, don't pet. That one's really hard to do. We see it every time we go into an owner's home and they're like, okay, what, would the, what are the problems you'd like to work on? And as they pet their dog in a jumping position, they're like, I don't want my dog to, to jump, jump on, on me. me. I'm like, well, it's happening right now. And you, Half of the <laughs> problem is it. you. So making sure that you're not, I know they're cute. I know they're wonderful, especially when they're babies, but um, this behavior happens long term and you have another 15 years to snuggle and be really wonderful with your puppy. So, And the last rule that if you can get your whole family on board is that when your dog is chewing on something inappropriate, your hand should never take anything. It should always come with a gift first. So hand is give versus take. So lead with a toy, an object, or something that's appropriate for your dog to chew on in exchange for what's in their mouth. This means slippers and Anything. underwear, yeah. tissues and paper. If it's not, if it's dangerous, obviously we want to help our dogs out at that moment, but if it's a leaf or a stick, 
that is not a dangerous situation. You should not be pulling it out of your puppy's mouth. Grab something better to exchange with them. Um, there's actually dogs in South America that go and get banana leaves and take and trade them for treats at stores because they watch people doing that. Dogs understand what trading is and what value is, but you have to teach it to them first. Um, Adam, you had a really good question on the next one. We're talking about chewing furniture. I actually have a dog chewing on the end of our chair and you're going to see what we did. All right. So I'll answer that question in just a second and then let me know if, if that was the answer to your question. So jump prevention. Why do dogs jump? Go ahead and chat if you'd like to put in why you think your dog jumps, but they jump because they want to get on the couch. They jump because they can. They jump because they want to get pets. They jump because they usually just want attention. Um, some smaller dogs learn to jump really quickly because it's the initiation of being picked up. It's a way a dog says hi. It's the what they've learned to do since they were really, really young. They all jump on them on their they litter mats. They climb over yeah. each other. They sit on each other's head. They're just trying to interact with you. And the more that you touch or pay attention to that, the more you're reinforcing it. And you don't have to, not all dogs need to stop jumping. But if it's something that you particularly want to work on, then this is what you do. We're gonna go. We're gonna get to that, Paula. Yeah. So that is why. Specifically, why do dogs jump on other people? We're gonna answer Paula's question. Okay. Um, dogs jump on other people for two reasons. One, because they want to say hi, so they're trying to bring them in, or their attention. Or two, they're pushing them away, saying, "Get away from me and my owner. That's my mom." Now we don't know which one it is until we see if you have a recording of it we can tell you by the body language what it most likely looked like a jumping to come forward is going to look different than a jumping to get away so to teach an alternative behavior we're going to ask you to teach a sit a down go to your place or eye contact instead of jumping Management tools like pet gates, harness and leash, crate and expense completely stops the dog from jumping 100% until trained. So how do you stop a dog when you're meeting a new person? Management. You put a leash on them or you put them behind a baby gate. If your dog's chewing on furniture, how do you stop them from chewing on furniture? All right, in this video, we're going to show you a video on jump prevention. This is the first time we worked with this dog and we asked her to do a sit instead. Now she didn't, we didn't know if she actually knew the cue, but actually we've worked with both dogs, yeah. right? Yeah. So you walk away, you walk up towards your dog and the moment that they go into a sit, you're going to reward that behavior. That's when they get their petting and loving or treats. So we did move away, come back towards the dog, treat for the sit, ignore everything else. After a few repetitions, the dog actually picked this up pretty quickly. So it's sit, reward right here. Reward the behavior you want instead. You do this with you first, then you can do it with other people. And for the rest of the day, both of these dogs would just walk up and sit next to me. And that's how they would tell me that they wanted my attention. If your dog is already jumping, then you're gonna lead with a treat down low. So you see what she's doing here is she's leading with food where she wants the dog to be. And that's her greeting, that's her meat. She meets the dog down low with all four paws. She gives the food, she adds a little petting, she walks away and you repeat this over and over about eight to 10 reps. And then you can ping pong with people around the house. You can go from one side to the other. If you are using a clicker already, you can cue a sit. If your dog has a sit on cue already, walk away, come back, sit, click, reward the dog for the sit. Walk away, come back, sit, mark, reward. The reward is not always a treat, Megan. It could be just the petting and the attention, but a treat is a super high value reward and it makes sure that your dog learns this quickly and associates it right away 
instead of adding a bunch of extra calories, use their kibble. Yeah. This, you have a hundred pieces of rewards to use first thing in the morning. So instead of putting it in a bowl and just giving it to them, help them help reinforce good behavior right when it happens. These two dogs, these two puppies are eight weeks and five days. Yeah. So you can start this day one immediately. Some of the breeders start this at their puppies at six weeks. So um, start immediately is what kind of greeting do you want? Use your puppy's kibble, use whatever the reinfo whatever the reinforcement is to your dog. So some like petting, some prefer food, some want their toy, but you're saying you need to say please. Please to us is usually sit instead of anything else or just four paws on the floor. Next is chewing prevention. Dogs chew because they have teeth. Um, they're exploring what their mouth can do and what their teeth can do. It's the same as a child, a six month old child learning to crawl for the very first time. If you've got anything on the floor, they're putting it in their mouth, everything. So you normally put a playpen around a child no different than a puppy. Right, if it's on the floor and your puppy is on the floor, it's fair game. So most puppies are chewing to relieve stress or because they have a lack of stimulation, they're bored, they're trying to get your attention, they haven't their been, teeth hurt their teeth hurt because they're teething and it's bone shoving through their face. And a lot of times it's because they have access and you're running after them right away when they're chewing on something so they got your attention. Um, so we can help problem solve this by first managing the access, like Yo said, the X pin or a play pin or having them in an area where everything in that area is theirs, right? I don't go into your room and take all of your stuff and then use it for myself. It's your room, everything in there is your stuff. So here are the steps to chewing prevention when your dog is chewing on a piece of furniture. Is approach with the toy, redirect to the toy, and the toy should be something that your dog is allowed to chew. Even though a stuffed animal is going to get their attention because it's normally got like a floppy arm or tail, I would recommend more like a Kong or something your dog can put their teeth into, a Nyla bone, um, something with rubber on it so that they can go back and start using their teeth the way that they want. And then you manage. So after you redirect your dog to another spot and say, how about here? How about coming down to this place and chewing on your bone? And I'll normally in this video, you'll see us redirect to one of the dog beds and then putting up something or tethering your dog to the dog bed while you're there supervised would be a better approach than just Hey, try that again. They go and then they come back to the, to the furniture. I have walked into houses with clients that are like, oh my gosh, my dog chewed a hole in my wooden floor, my entire couch. We had a German shepherd two weeks ago that chewed the entire couch, left the dog by himself first time, two years old in a house. He had and a husky that tore the felt off a pool table. Um, also the corners of houses, dogs love that. If it's accessible to your puppy, it is fair game. Yes. All right, so here's your chewing prevention video. Miss Pearl here is chewing on the piece of the bottom of the furniture. So Julie comes over with a chew toy that's got a tail. It's a duck with a rope and it's got a little squeaker. Now at first, she doesn't really want to leave, so Julie makes it more enticing and brings her, she doesn't pick her up, brings her where she wants her to be, which is on the dog bed. We recorded about three shots of this, so here's the second shot doing the same thing. Does anyone, can anyone guess what we did to record <laughs> this? Because obviously she's not chewing on our furniture. You know, the movie trick we had to yeah. use to get <laughs> our mouth on there, similar to Mr. Ed, the talking horse. So now Julie leashes her, gives her a bully stick, and now Pearl will go anywhere, right? Don't give them the option to go back and keep doing it. Yes. Yeah, very good, Stella. Peanut butter, that's exactly how we got her mouth on there. But 
just about, I mean, if it was a normal day at a normal time, most puppies can be caught chewing on the carpet or our socks and our shoes. So um, management, problem solving, and then preventing it from happening again. Because so, if you're not learning the lesson after the first time, who's the, <laughs> who's, the whose fault is it really, <laughs> right? So from, from bringing your dog to where you want them to be, leashing them or tethering them, putting them behind an X pen, giving them something you do want them to put their mouth on. We have not put the harness or leash on our pup yet. So then if your puppy or dog isn't exposed to the leash and the harness, you would use one of the other three management tools, an X pen, a crate, or gating them in a puppy proofed room. Yeah, so management is all four of those things and use whatever you are trying to. Um... Okay, so we'll go into how to expose your harness and leash. Uh, we did that last week. We did it last week, but it'll come up again, I yeah. think, uh, in, in the series. If you do wanna go ahead and cheat and go back to last week and look at- Or we can try to mention a little bit. We could maybe yeah. post a video. Yeah. All right, setting your dog up for success, you want to know what it takes to motivate your dog. So it's important that you have the right training set up next on Thursday when you're ready to go. A place that is quiet, not, not compacted with lots of noise, a place that's suitable for your dog. A um, yoga mat is in, might be helpful because it's a little bit softer. Um, you want to do your play. You're going to be warming up with a lot of human play. So you want to practice that maybe today or tomorrow so that you feel comfortable doing that on Thursday because it gets them aroused. You saw how much energy and how much fun it is. Then you can begin training. You don't wake a puppy up and go, hey, let's just start using the brain. I wouldn't work well with no. it like that. So I'm not a morning person <laughs> at all. So I need a, a good routine of getting up and walking and doing something else before my brain really Get the clicks. blood going. So yeah. play is your in between the brain and then the, the body. Um, you wanna make sure your puppy's hungry. So you're going to hold off on their 11, their, their midday meal, and maybe kind of go a little bit less on their breakfast just to make sure that they're hungry and wanting to work. Um, strategically put their time that you have them going down at a time where they'll be awake at time for class. Rewards, you wanna make sure that you're using a reinforcement um, that your dog likes. So testing the different toys, you know, bring out one toy and then the other and shape them and present both of them and go, which, oh, she likes this one instead. Then you're going to take that toy and put it up and go, well, we're going to save that for training. We're going to show you a little treat tournament that we do with foods, whether it's kibble or treats, what is your dog motivated to work for? And then we're going to talk a little bit about how to use a clicker, just a real brief discussion about it. Um, over the next four weeks, you're going to learn about how dogs learn, capturing, shaping, targeting, and luring. These are the methods that we use for training. Today, we're going to talk a little bit more about capturing. What, what do you see, Bambi? Um, loading a marker. A marker is designed to tell your dog it's like snapping a picture during a video and the moment that that picture, whatever that picture captured is the moment your dog did something correct. In charades, we do this when we're not talking, right? You do this to say, you're done guessing. That was exactly the right thing you did. So in this video, we're gonna show you how to load a clicker. A clicker is just an acoustic sound that it's a lot more precise than trying to use a verbal marker, a different kind of marker. I mean, if you use a, a marker like, good girl, but then you use it outside and it sounds a little different, your dog doesn't know whether they're getting a, a reinforcement, a reward like a treat, or are you just saying, good girl? that question sir no uh, we understand that it's uh we have about one minute until noon if you need to log off thank you so much for joining us we'll have the rest of this posted in our private facebook group private canine learning academy question and answer so um search us on that facebook and you guys can catch up if you have to go for a meeting or school all right, so to load a clicker or load a marker is you're going to keep your hands in a very neutral position and you're going to make that sound of the click or you're going to use a verbal marker like yes and then you're basically going to just offer a treat. So it's a mark, click, 
and then a treat so that the dog hears that sound and then puts it together with food. So it's mark and then food. So we use a clicker, so we call it click, but you can use any kind of verbal marker. And I'll have the link to these on Amazon, really. But a mark is a promise that a reinforcement is coming. So if it's being, if you have kids and they're pressing it all the time and nothing's happening after, it really loses its value. So again, this puppy is under nine weeks old and we loaded a clicker two days ago. Yeah couple days ago. So now the dog is a clicker trained dog, which means she's, he's ready to work when we come out. He wants to learn something new and understands that the click means he did it, whatever it is that we're asking for correctly and that we promise to bring food. So uh, the training topic today we will have on Thursday. This is Miss Darla, Adam's dog, and we're going to go and show you our two um, drills called Run With Me and Round Robin. This is recall, this is come when call. This is one of the number one most important behaviors that you can teach your dog. And here are the steps. Give your dog a treat for no reason. Run away from your dog and look over your shoulder. When you see that your dog is running towards you, that is recall. Following you is recall. You're gonna turn around, Greet your dog right then and there and reward them for that movement. You do want to make recall a game. Don't wait until you need this when your dog runs out the door and you're going, ah, come! Start when they're puppies so that you know when you need it, it's there. She's gotten so much more confident. Yeah. So you see Julie just, she's ignoring all of that and that's okay. That's not what the purpose of this is. It's trying to make coming to you a fun game. Those of you that just got your puppies, you know, just a few days ago, you can start this immediately. Find a room your dog is comfortable in, take a few steps away, see that your dog's coming, turn around and reward them with love, petting, at the end, I didn't even need a treat for her. You could see she's just excited to come and run and play with me and chase. So um, this is a lot of fun. If your dog is already doing this and it's reliable, you're ready to put a cue on it. You're ready to put a word that means come to you. So if you've got five or six um, good repetitions, you can say a cue like come or here. Here is what we call round robin. If you've got two people in the home, you have them going back back and forth. You have the dog going back and forth, doing the exact same thing. We had about five treats each. So we did 10 repetitions in less than 90 seconds. It was quick. Making sure everyone in the house can recall your dog because it's one thing if you can do it, it's another thing if your husband or your kid can do it. So practice as a family. This is the introduction to recall. Puppy treat tournament, you wanna to find out exactly what your dog is, your, what, what is your motivation, what's your dog's motivation. So the puppy treat tournament is getting a plate full of food, um, lots of different things like try kibble, try turkey meat, try the, if you have a topper of some kind, give your dog one of each and see which they take. And the one that they take becomes the winner of that challenge. Try eight different things and narrow it down to the one prize winner. And we really recommend keeping that one for your highest reinforcement when you need it. Uh, the last topic today is called Pass the Puppy. If you have multiple people in the house, it's important that your dog is okay with being alone. So, um, You'll bring your dog, whether it's on leash or carried, you're gonna hand them off to someone else. That person can give food generously to that dog and watch you walk away. So you can go out of the room for a quick second and then come on back and you can take your dog back. You don't want your dog to be so completely attached to you that leaving becomes stressful. So start this early. Do you see Julie walk away, walk out of the room? And she walks right back. And the puppy barely noticed I was gone. Yeah, he did. She did. But I rewarded the dog while Julie left. 
So homework Thursday or homework tonight is to look for costumes, a puppy sweater, hats, glasses, masks, scarf. Um, look for a good place to do your training. Um, grab some food, whether it's just their kibble or if you've got some treats. If you have questions about that, that's what we're here for. Um, and bring all that stuff and be ready. If you haven't gotten a leash or harness, we recommend getting a little Velcro harness that's really soft and, and cut, you know, good for your dog and a very thin leash. If you don't have that, don't worry about it. Um, look up that socialization list and start marking off what you've accomplished already. Field trips this week, Home Depot, Coffee Place, Grocery Store, those are great places to see random people and practice your recall game. Go ahead and start that. All right. So I hope that we got to everyone's questions while we were doing this. Are there any restrictions for what treats we can or cannot give our 10 week old puppy? I would say in the beginning, because puppy tummies are super kibble. sensitive, we wanna start with kibble and like plain chicken maybe, if they're okay boiled, with that, boiled, boiled chicken. chicken. Um, and then you can introduce different proteins, but especially within the first couple of weeks, it, it takes a long time to transition that kind of gross tummy. Um, we will email the PDF of the socialization checklist. That'll be something in your follow-up email. Um, if it's the, oh, nope, we're getting a couple more. Costco chicken is $5 and you can cut up and freeze. That's from Adam, who's uh, Darla, loves a good um, just rotisserie chicken or boiled yeah. chicken. Vons has it too. Vons has a, a chicken breast already cooked and it's all put in a little bag. I love it. Um, we could talk about car rides. I'm going to post, uh, that seems to be a pretty common thing. So making sure that you're on our Facebook, our private Facebook canine learning Academy questions and answers. Um, we will post something about car rides because I cannot tell you how many times a week that I get that question. So we will post that for an answer for everyone to see. Um, if you don't have a puppy right now, some of you are still waiting, come to class on Thursday anyway, so you can see and listen to the tips that we're giving you. If you don't feel like if your puppy's asleep, don't wake them up, but still join us for class. You might still learn or hear us say something to someone that might be struggling with a particular thing. Um, the class is gonna go a lot faster, a lot less talking and more moving and more action, but we want you to understand all the why so that you're more likely to want to do this. Any other questions before we sign off? Thank you all for being here with us. It's so nice to see new faces. Sharon, Sharon just sent a message. Um, we also have another one. The uh, Is the clicker the command or is the clicker telling them that they've succeeded at the command slash mark? So the clicker is the mark, meaning that you did exactly what I asked you to do. So if it's a sit, then the rear touching. So this is her telling me to high five. This is when the clicker would happen. Yes. And then I would reward her with a reward of some kind. So the, the moment that she's coming close to the contact, that's the moment that we would capture in a picture. That's the moment that we would mark. And then the dog would go, okay, where's my food? Right. Because the mark always equals a reward. It's a promise, it's a guarantee. I'm never gonna not pay you. And that way, if you don't have something on you, that promise becomes time for you to go and get something. The other thing is that we use shaping. So let's say I'm trying to teach someone I've never met before a high five. I might just put my hand here and she starts just moving her hand. I might mark that and then reward her and wait for her to do something a little bit more. So we, when we're working with dogs, they're, they don't understand us. So we let them just, we motivate them by marking and rewarding to get them going. And then we wait for more position, position, precision or more movement towards the final project. So like in recall, your dog might not initially come to you, but if they look at you, that's a good start. And then if you're, you're marking and rewarding that movement towards you to finish that becomes something your dog learns. Like the sit that we did with those puppies, by the third sit, they just walked up and sat. We didn't have to say anything. Right. We just like literally stood up there and they came over and sat. 
and they learned from that point in there. When they went home, the mom was like, oh my God, what did you do? My dog is sitting for, for no reason all the time. Yeah. So. Sharon, I'm going to send you, please email us because we have a rescue um, new dog workshop that's going to answer a lot of the leash and the harness questions. Just as a disclaimer, you do not have to walk your dog every day. And especially if you have a young dog, you should not be walking your dog every day. Um, walking is not the most important or even the best kind of exercise. You have a professional athlete under your roof. If you just go in a square around the corner, that is not exercise. It's exercise for you, maybe, but they have four legs and they're muscular and they're built for tasks. So we're talking about alternative exercises like human play, that's exercise. exercise. Toy tearing play. up a box, right, to that's, get their food, that's exercise. exercise. That's mental and physical exercise. Running back and forth, like playing tag in the house like we were doing. We we're running away and doing come. You're still getting their heart rate up, which is exercise. Just because they're not moving their legs in a straight line doesn't mean they're not getting that energy out. So sometimes dogs come back even more ramped up from a walk because they didn't really right. get that physical need. And it was more stressful than anything. Right. All right, so if you haven't done so already, look for us on Facebook, our private Facebook page. We're going to be sending the link to this class on that page as well as some um, videos that we we displayed. And um, that is where you can ask a lot of questions and we'll be able to respond right there as well. Well, this is four classes. So this was one of four, well, four eight, lessons. It's eight, eight class. classes because it's twice a week. So we'll be practicing this information on Thursday. Please keep coming every week because there's going to be something new about the leash, about different harnesses, about different um, socialization stuff and problem prevention. So hopefully we can get you through puppyhood in the easiest way possible. Yes, thank you very much. We had last month 2,500 students from all over the world, including my cousin here from Panama, Panama. Um, Iceland, Denmark. So really appreciate all your wonderful, beautiful faces. I can't wait to see the puppies in action on Thursday. So signing off here from Sunset Beach. Take care. Thank you guys. Bye, Sharon. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Sandra.